And welcome back to Across the Beard. Bo- let me try Across that again. The Across the Beard. I do have a beard. <laughs> We're both growing beards right now, too. That's the best part. Yeah, from No Shave November. Anyway, Across the Board with uh, E and the Colonel here on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org. And uh, another up-and-coming band, really, really solid on these guys. Um, sort of along the same formula as A Day to Remember, and actually label mates. With a data remember. And on tour with. And on tour with a data remember. Uh, and a label mates yep. with Taproot. This is Brett from Close Your Eyes. Brett, how you doing today? Pretty good. How you guys doing? Outstanding. Really good, Living really life, good. man. Um, so you guys, a little bit about you guys. You guys are from Abilene, Texas, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, um, I'm from Houston. Shane and Andrew are from Abilene. Sonny lived in Abilene. from Michigan. And our drummer is from Winnipeg, um, in Canada. Okay, so you guys get around a little bit then. I got you. All right, um, yeah. and uh, so you have your new album out, uh, like we said, with Victory Records. Huge fans of Victory Records here. All Every band on Victory is completely solid. Love them. Uh, and the new album is We Will Overcome. Um, yeah. Like I said, you know, one of my favorite songs uh, by you guys, or my definite favorite song of you is, is Digging Graves. Love that tune. Um, but Song for the Broken is the big, uh, the big hit that's being pushed right now. Tell us a little bit about uh, your writing process on this album. Um, well, most of the songs that were written on there, um, I would say about 90% of them, um, I wrote outside of practice and just brought them into practice and like everybody kind of came together. We changed a few things up, um, and just like the songs were pretty much written though before we got into practice. As far as the music goes, the vocals usually come later. Some of the songs I wrote the vocals before I came into practice also like Part of song for the broken, I did that, but um, for the most part, vocals are written in practice. Now, uh, a lot of, you know, like Song for the Broken, you're talking about, you know, the broken people in America. A lot of your songs are about that, and a lot of, uh, from what I've read at least, that's a lot of what goes into your writing, talking about those that are less fortunate in America and who are uh, dealing with some suffering. Talk about what, what that means to you. Um, well, that actually has nothing to do with my writing. Um, I, I try and stay away from the vocals as much as possible. Okay. Um, the only time I ever write vocals is just like when I like really, really like a melody in a section or like really feel like the music speaking something. Um, I guess so it does have a little bit of that because, um, the way the song for the broken came about was I, I wrote the bridge to that song. Uh, the part that says this is my worship, this is my life to bring hope into a broken world. Um, but when I wrote that, I wasn't necessarily thinking about the way that it came out. It, it had more to do with, like, what my purpose in my life was rather than um, the other way around, like the rest of the song. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess it does come into there a little bit. I definitely feel passionate about that, and that's a big part of our purpose. But, like, when I'm writing, I just kind of let it flow out. It's not that I'm necessarily thinking about any one thing. Now, you guys are obviously, as we said before, on the Victory Records label. Uh, what's the best thing about working on, on Victory Records and working with, uh, was it, is it working with the other bands, the producers? Uh, what, what does Victory Records bring to the table for you guys? Uh, we actually are not with the other bands all that often. Um, I guess that A Day to Remember is the first Victory band that we've ever been on tour with. Um, and, like, that, they're awesome guys, love them. Um, and we had so much fun on that tour. But um, working with Victory, just like all the guys that work over there at Victory and all the girls that work at Victory, um, they're just awesome to work with, and we have a good time. Like, we hang out with them anytime we're in Chicago and stuff like that. Now, uh, one of your other big songs, The Body, uh, the video for that I've read actually has a plot. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, that song is about... um, there's a lot of comments like on the video on YouTube and stuff like that that it's an anti-Catholic, anti-religion song, and that's not the case at all. Like we were not anti-Catholic by any means. Um, the song is actually about a problem that we've seen in some of the church in America of like just the judgmental attitude and uh, like attitude of superiority um, to where, for one thing, you're not accepting of other people, and for another thing, um, the the actual purpose of the church and, like, the message of the church to be putting across is lost in the commercialism and the way that faith is, like, bought and sold almost. 
Okay. Um, so so that's, good. That, that's, that's a lot of what the video is about, is um, just like the judgmentalism and the business aspect, like how church has been commercialized and it's consumer-driven. Yeah, it's a cool video. It's really interesting to watch. Uh, check that one out. It's uh, up there on YouTube, so go out and check that as well. Carl? Yeah, I have to ask, and again, you know, we, we, we say that you know, there's a lot of hints of different little things we can pick up of other bands that we think. You guys have a unique sound, but again, we feel like there's a lot of influences. Who are your personal influences in your music? Uh, personally, it's my biggest two influences are um, MXPX and Stretch Armstrong. Nice. Um, I've, been, I've been listening to them since I was in seventh grade, and I still listen to them all the time. Um, Recently, or not recently, but within like the last four or five years, I started listening to bands like Come Back Kid and With Honor and stuff like that a lot. Right. But for for me, like when I was learning to play, it was MXPX and Stretch Armstrong. So, what's your favorite album that you own then? Oh, By man. another band. Um, are we talking about any album or? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, any album, probably. Um, a live album by Bruce Hornsby called Here Come the Noisemakers. Nice. Good call. It's it's like a jazz fusion kind of album with like some Latin stuff in there and just like some straight like um, almost like pop songs, folk songs. So then would you ever want to cover a Bruce Hornsby song then? I don't, I don't know if you guys could, I don't know what Mandolin Raid would sound like <laughs> covered by you guys, but you know, <laughs> would you be interested in doing something like that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that'd be tough. I, I'm I'm not too into covering songs. Um, we did it for a while. We actually did the same song that Your Data Remember did, neither of us knowing that the other was doing it. Um, when we were both covering Since You've Been Gone, the Kelly Clarkson song. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and we that's, that's pretty much the only song that we've done ever more than once. Um, we've covered a couple of MXPX songs, like, one time each. Um, but... I don't know, we're, we're just not really into covering songs. Like, we'd rather write our stuff and get our stuff solid than, like, I don't know, sometimes we feel like covers are kind of gimmicky. Uh, I can understand where you're coming from on that. I mean, sometimes it really feels better to know what you hear being played is your own. Um, the first time you heard something of your own being played on the radio, uh, on any kind of format, what, what, was, what, what was it like to hear that? What was that feedback going through your head? Um, man, I don't, I think that the first time I ever heard anything of ours being played in, like, a public area was I walked into a Hot Topic and they were playing it, um, and luckily I had my mom there to embarrass me and announce to everybody who worked there that that was her son no, was she, that was on the... Was she screaming, like, that's my baby! That's my boy! <laughs> no, she, uh, she wasn't doing that exactly, but she, she definitely made it known, and so, like, whenever I hear that stuff now and... I'm with her. I just get out of the store as quickly as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that wasn't my impression of your mom. I haven't met her. I, did, I didn't mean to make her sound like that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, now, I have never been on tour. I've never been a rock store. But I, I've been on some tour buses with rock stars. And it, it just seems like such tight, cramped quarters. What what essentials do you have to have on the tour bus with you that kind of you know make things a little bit easier, make a little bit of home? Well, here's the thing. We are not a day to remember, and we are not rock stars. We are on tour in a 15-passenger van. We don't have a tour bus. Okay, then what do you um, <laughs> carry in the van besides a spare tire? Um, well, like we've got our trailer with all our equipment and stuff like that. Um, for me, I've got to have my laptop. I've got to have a sleeping bag and an air mattress. Okay. Well, how about this then? When you when you do become rock stars, because you guys are great, I'm, I'm telling it, you, it's you know, going to happen. Yeah, um, you know, one of the top bands to know in 2010 and some magazine and, and website lists, and, and that's absolutely true. So when you get big, you know, what do you think that like? I guess how much of a relief will that be, or how do you think you'll react to that when you when you jump up? Like in one of the bands we just interviewed, um, you know, we saw in this moment in concert, and they're another one of those bands that came up. Um, you know, in a van, and and then did uh, you know a tour bus from there, uh, and just just a huge difference. You know, what do you think that? How do you think that will change your life? Um, I think that I won't have a sleeping bag and a air mattress anymore because I'll be in a bunk. I'm not sure <laughs> what it'll change other than that. Yeah, well, you might hold on to it for sentimental reasons. Yeah. Yeah, now, I don't know. 
Now I have to. I ask. mean, I I got I've gotten so used to it that I sleep at home now on that air mattress and with my sleeping bag. Oh no way. Yeah. Uh, no, I I couldn't do that. <laughs> I absolutely could not do that. And the thing is, is that I have two beds in my room and I still sleep in that air mattress. <laughs> Just on that air mattress. In the <laughs> Comfort bag. zone. Yeah. Other other than um, a change of sleeping habits, what do we expect from the band in the upcoming new year? Uh, okay. Well, we. Um, we go back on tour. We're playing a show for an Invisible Children benefit show this Friday, but we the next Friday after that, we're back on tour. And we'll be up in the Northeast for about a month and a half um, through the end of February. And then um, we come home and write some more in March. We're, we've been writing on the new album while we've been home after the Dare to Remember tour. Um, and then we'll be writing some more in March. We go out in April and May... In June, that that tour ends after the first week of June, so we'll probably get home around mid-June sometime. Uh, we'll be home for a couple weeks. Hopefully, we'll finish writing a new album during that time. Um, then we'll be going up to Cornerstone and be going on the Scream the Prayer tour for the rest of the summer. Um, I think that we'll be recording after that, and then we'll be heading over to Europe after we record. Wow, that'll be incredible. Now, actually, you guys are playing nearby us in Wilmington, Delaware. I think it's next month. So uh, we will definitely be at that show. And looking forward to seeing you guys live for the first time. Should be should be a great time. Um, is that next month or is that this month? It might be this month. I can't remember. We have so many shows that we're going to coming up. Uh, it might be later this month, is it? Maybe. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. Weeks. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, we're going to be there. It's That's uh, probably, what, two and a half hours from us, so that's not even a, a bad drive or anything. Now, um, I confess, that uh, Brett, that I don't know. I know that um, you sing the backup vocals um, or, or split vocal time. The I guess the more screaming in the songs, is that you? Or is that... Um, some of it on the album is me. Well, actually, I guess on this album, none of it's me. The, um, on the EP and on the demo tracks for this album, I did some of it, but... I didn't do any of it on the actual album. Okay. Um, that's Shane and Sonny doing most of that. Okay. When you do that, um, this has always been something I've wanted to ask people of, you know, of this type of genre and never gotten a chance to. Um, how do you warm up for those kinds of things? That's something I, I should have asked Maria you know, from In This Moment and Richard Patrick and some of those right. bands that we've had on. But um, yeah, how do you warm up to do that and, you know, and kind of, I guess, not get you know, vocal nodes and, and you know, throat damaged? Well, um... Like, do you have vocal coaching um, or anything, I, or you just you just go we, right in? Shane into it? and I both do singing warm ups. We don't really do screaming warm ups. Um, I've I, I I've been around other people doing screaming warm ups, like Maddie from Four Today. Um, we we've been around him, like where he came he came and did guest vocals on the body. That's who does the second verse on the body. Okay, yeah. Um, and like when we're in the studio, he sounds like a death metal siren going off because he like just goes from low to high, like screaming, just like kind of this weird like thing but he's yelling and screaming it so like that's how he does his warm-ups but um as for us like sunny sunny's been smoking his whole life since he was like two years old so um <laughs> I, think that, I think his throat's the most coarse thing ever so he can just do it um so i guess smoking is a good workout for screaming or something i don't know there you go um and um and then shane and i just do singing warm-ups we don't Really do screaming warm ups. So with the singing warm ups, you have—I mean, have you learned from a vocal coach, or is that something you just learned on your own? You know, what's it do out there? Um, some of both. Um, like I, I've taught him a few warm ups because I was a um, one of my majors in college was music. Um, I when I transferred, the music credits didn't transfer, so I actually dropped that major. But um, that I mean, I learned stuff in my vocal classes in college right okay nice um, now since you guys are up and coming like you said you're not rock stars yet but I'm telling you it's it's destined to happen in the Inevitable. very near future yeah it's it's really right just around the corner um, who would make you starstruck you know who who would you you know that you would meet on tour or anywhere that you would just kind of be unable to speak for a few minutes oh this has happened and this is actually a pretty funny story um, we were playing a festival in Arkansas called self Struck festival and um which happens to be where Victory found us, and that's how we um, came to be on Victory. But um, we were playing on the main stage right before MXPX, and they weren't there right at the beginning of our set. Like, they hadn't gotten there from the airport yet. 
And about halfway through our set, they walked up on the stage, and they were watching us from, like, behind us on the stage, and I didn't know it, and I turned around in the middle of the song. Um, we were playing the bridge of the song, and I just completely forgot what I was doing, played a million wrong notes because I saw them back there, and I just kind of froze. Wow. So I guess that that's who made me starstruck. Yeah, that'll do it. That's that's really gonna mess you right. up. You know? <laughs> Played some sour notes, something like uh, rock. Uh, what's the rock band gone bad? Oh gosh. Yeah, and up. like after the song was over, I I was giving them a hard time. I was like, yeah. So they walked back on the stage and completely forgot what I was doing, and you just hear Tom yell from the side of the stage, "Sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, again, Brett, we really appreciate the time, you know, um, and we, re- you know, look forward to seeing you. What's we're going to see you, like we said, in just a couple of weeks. We think Probably. it is the Wilmington, Delaware show. What's your favorite song yeah. to play live? Ooh, man, um, it really depends on the night and what kind of show we're playing. Um, sometimes it's Digging Graves. Sometimes it's um, Seventeen Twenty. Sometimes it is Songs of the Broken, sometimes it's Friends. It really depends on the show, like what kind of show we're playing. Okay, nice. Well, we're looking forward to it and definitely looking forward to hearing Digging Graves. That's one of those that I'm big on when I go to see a band. I want to hear the songs that I love from that band. Like Nonpoint, we went to yeah. see them. We requested, hey, can you can you play Alive and Kicking? They were like, yeah, yeah, we'll play that. So, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, songs I really love to hear. So, really looking forward to hearing Digging Graves. And again, the new album by Close Your Eyes. The new album is called We Will Overcome, out now on Victory Records. And, um, you know, big fan of you guys. So uh, how can people keep in touch with you guys? I know you have a MySpace site. You know, what's what's the best way to keep in touch with uh, all things Close Your Eyes? Uh, I think the best way is through the Facebook. Because um, we, we get on that. This whole new MySpace thing is just a pain in the butt. It is, isn't it? The format of everything. Yeah. And so we're not very good at that, I guess. Um but Facebook, we stay on top of that most of the time, and so we'll answer people on there. And, like, we tell people, feel free to add our personal Facebooks as well, and we'll talk to you on there. Nice. Very cool. And, uh, by the way, where did the band name come from? Close your eyes. Okay, this is a long question, so I'm glad you're wrapping it up here. Yeah, we've got a two-hour <laughs> show. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, it, it actually is two different things. It um, It's kind of, it's, let me let me think about how to answer this the best way. Okay, one of the things is a kind of like a spiritual thing um, where what we see in the in the world, it, like the physical world, is not necessarily our true reality, um, and that some things are more important than what you actually see. And so sometimes we need to close our eyes to the world to see our reality. Okay, and then. I the other part of it is just kind of like a satire on our society and pop culture and how um, our generation, like society and pop culture, dictate what you should do with your life, sometimes to our detriment, and that we need to close our eyes to the outside influences of um, those things to like truly be ourselves and find ourselves. I like that. That's a way better answer than Stone Temple Pilots, by the way. <laughs> They just picked three well, random words out of the uh, out of the dictionary, so love it. But uh, again, we will overcome the new album. Close your eyes, go out and see these guys. And uh, as soon as we come back from the show in Delaware, we will report back and uh, tell everybody how that was as well. And uh, we're looking forward to it. We'll uh, we'll definitely have to try to meet up with you guys there as well. Again, this has been Brett from Close Your Eyes. This is across the board with Ian the Colonel on Hawk Radio, HawkRadio.org.